morning. We have, hope we had a really fun day of talks. Uh, great speaker lineup that we're, we're really excited about. Um, I want to just give a couple quick shout outs to um, some of the folks that helped us get this together. This is a very much a volunteer effort and, and people kind of jumping in because they want to be helpful. Um, so thank you to KCRW, who is our official uh, promotional partner for this. Definitely helped us get the word out. Um, thanks to Prescott McCarthy for the really cool artwork, uh, making us look great. We have um, a couple of our speakers from the previous summit. For anyone who doesn't know, this is our second summit. The first one was back in May. Um, Chris Denson and Bill Silva, who were speakers the first time, sent us speakers for this one. And so, you know, this is very much a community effort and we really appreciate uh, this sort of all hands energy that seems to be forming. Uh, Billboard Magazine, thank you for the support. Susie for um, handling all of our publicity and really helping us get the word out. Thanks to anybody I might have missed. Simon, so, you want to talk a little bit about what's coming up for the day? Sure. I think, you know, the first uh, summit we put together was really focused on COVID and music and technology and community. And as we started having conversations about what to do today, um, you know, COVID is still incredibly prevalent and affecting all of our lives. And the other major concern and issue and topic of the day is racial justice. And so that's really driven a lot of the decisions about who we've got speaking today. Um, up next at 9.30, we've got Toby Parks uh, from Des Moines, Iowa, uh, who's an entertainment lawyer who moved from Brooklyn, gave up big city life uh, to start a community in Des Moines and build a music venue and start a nonprofit record label. Uh, and I'll be in conversation with her and a gentleman named Doc Shaw, who bought a derelict, um, 1950s and 60s ballroom in Tulsa and is in the process of renovating it as a music venue and community center under the uh, umbrella of his nonprofit, A Pocket Full of Hope. Um, we'll also be talking to the mayor of Huntsville, Alabama about how he is working on making it a music city. Um, he's brought in Shane Shapiro who will be joining him and Katie Bain from Billboard will be moderating that and another special guest from the music board there, Celeste. Uh, and then we also later will be talking to Prescott, uh, which I'm super excited about. I first met, met Prescott when he was doing installation art at music festivals. And now he's buying crazy little properties in small towns in California and Utah, and really starting to build things from the ground up, I think. You know, we all recognize that some changes are needed and when we're in the big city, making those changes uh, can be really hard and certainly in the face of COVID and changes in employment and income and all of that, a lot of people are looking at ways to downsize or change their lives and prioritize different things. Um, certainly that's something I've looked at in terms of going other places and you know we got rid of a car already um just because we don't need it right now so uh prescott's kind of leading the way and he's like two thousand uh population towns finding interesting properties renovating them and turning them into cultural centers um you know that's pretty good and you've got some interesting stuff lined up for today too right oh yes i do um <laughs> uh, yeah, we have so I'm, I think I'm hosting three talks today. We have um, my friend Amy Mallon organized uh, a panel of friends and clients that she works with talking about how celebrities, brands and nonprofits are coming together to support important causes. Um, we have uh, Jai Elatas, uh, who's the founder of Creative Futures, um, which is an organization that helps people coming out of incarceration to um, get job training, important essential skills, and find jobs in creative industries. And so he's going to be talking with a couple of people who are graduates of the program about kind of what they go through to, to find work. And, um, and I think the goal there is to leave people, if, even if you're on the employment side, with some ideas, some tools that you can use 
to uh, improve your hiring in a way that's not only better for your business, but also better for the world that we live in. Um, and then coming up at two o'clock, I have a talk with uh, Laura Cathcart Robbins, who is a blogger, podcaster, uh, very outspoken about issues related to race. And we're gonna talk about not only some of those issues, but also um, what it's like for her kind of being out in the public eye talking about these very um, uh, inflammatory topics and some of the costs and benefits to her personally. So that's what I got coming up. Um, I sent out a poll and, and a couple questions. If you check your chat, uh, we'd love to, we want to make this a little bit informal. We'd love to kind of learn about everybody that's here. Um, so uh, love to know what you do for a living. Are you, are you in the music industry? Um, what area? If not, uh, what do you do? We saw a couple people. We have Clint, shout out to Clint from the LA Times, was one of our speakers last time. Um, uh, shout out to Jose from KCRW. Uh, looks like we have a couple of entertainment attorneys, Lorraine. My people. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, I'd love to, love to know more about you guys. I'd also love to know um, what, do you, what, what brought you here today? What are you hoping to get out of? uh what are you hoping to get out of the summit we want to you know simon and i are going to be as hands-on as we can trying to make sure that there's answers and valuable insights for um the time that you're spending with us today so you know the more you want to get involved ask questions raise your hand um you can send you know you can put questions here and we'll try to make sure you have answers or you know you should definitely feel free to jump in the chat of any of the sessions. We'll be looking out for questions and trying to make sure that we get answers. Um, I forgot to other add, things. Josh, I wanted to just bring up, um, since, since we announced the schedule, there were a couple of changes. Um, some of you may have noticed that Joe Hadley from CAA dropped off the schedule. If you were following the trades uh, yesterday, you might have seen that there were some pretty major employment changes. A lot of people got laid off um, at the agency. And so it's just been a time where he's got to focus on some other things, but I expect that he will rejoin us on another date. And then in more, you know, positive and interesting uh, developments, the guys from Bitterroot uh, with comic book creators uh, that focused on, um, their story focuses on inspiration from the Tulsa massacre in 1921, a lot like the Watchmen. Um, two days ago, they were Eisner Award nominated. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Eisner Awards, they're basically the Oscars of comics. And uh, I'm excited to say that they are now Oscar or Eisner Award winning comic book creators. Um, so they're going to be fresh off uh, really major industry recognition and Ryan Coogler is attached to produce that movie. Um, and I think it'll be another year or two before we see it. But, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty, they're pretty incredible artists and storytellers. Uh, and they'll be joining us towards the end of the day. Sorry, Josh, I cut you off. No, no, that's perfect. Um, so uh, just a couple other things. Uh, I sent up a poll. It looks like about half of you joined us for the first one which was back in May. Um, so welcome to everyone that's new and welcome to everyone, uh, welcome back to everyone that's joining us for the second time. Um, if you are interested, all of the videos from the first summit, I think there's 29 talks, something like that, crazy, crazy number of talks, um, are up on our website, uh, antmusicsummit.com slash videos. You can watch all of those for free. Um, if you wanna learn more about Simon and, um, our other co-founder, Seth, and kind of how this all came together. They were both guests on my podcast, Rebel Radio. Uh, we did a short episode back in May talking about that. And if you wanna uh, you know, continue to be involved in what we're doing, as I said before, this is very much a community effort. We're welcoming ideas, questions, um, uh, suggestions for future talks, all of that. I think the easiest way to get in involved is our Facebook group. And Music Summit on Facebook. Uh, we have an Instagram page as well that you can join. 
Um, and I just posted another question in the chat, which is what, what's one question you'd like to have answered in today's talks? So anything that's burning uh, in your minds that you really want to know about, let us know. We will try to make that happen. Um, and then I think maybe last thing, I don't know. We're just sort of rolling, but um, uh, we're going to kind of regroup at the end of the day. We'd love to, you know, get everybody's thoughts on what you liked, what's uh, still lingering for you, you know, feedback, additional conversation. We had a, a short um, regroup at the end of the last one. I thought it, you know, it felt really good for come together and, and just share, you know, insights, reactions, learnings. Um, so look for that at four o'clock and try to join us if you can. And I think to echo what Josh is saying, this is very much a work in progress for us and we're, we're learning and trying to make every summit better. Uh, we're planning on experimenting with some other formats, maybe some shorter form things, you know, like weekly or on Twitch or kind of continuing to do the long form or both. Um, we're open to ideas. I see Peter, you've got some experience on the, uh, the TV facility side. So, you know, we're wide open for suggestions on how we can increase the production level. We've got some ideas and things and some of the talks today, we're going to be playing around a little bit with uh, what it looks like when it's not uh, restricted to a corner of the house and things like that. Um, and we're looking to just raise the level of the conversation, the space of the conversation, but we'll do the best with what we've got available for now. Absolutely. Um, all right. I don't know, does anybody want to type a question for the group? If not, maybe we'll give you a couple minutes to go get a coffee and be ready for our next talk at 9.30. So Clint wants to know how can media companies, newspapers, TV, et cetera, better partner with the music business folks? Seems hard with copyright and ownership issues. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, as you know, Clint, I definitely have ideas about uh, partnership, although I'm not the copyright expert and, and you know, I know some of those uh, issues get in the way for sure. So. Yeah, let's make sure we're exploring that. Anyone on the thread uh, have some ideas to share with Clint about how media can be more involved in music? Definitely welcome that discussion. Well, that was even, I mean, I think the live streaming platform is sort of interesting because the rights issues get a little cleaner depending on the platform that you're using um, if you're not recording it. But then, of course, once you record it and start trying to distribute it, then you go down a whole rights acquisition path. Um, you know, and also the other thing that we discovered today or over the course of planning this summit was the challenges of using music live. We had a, one of the talks that I wanted to do was with Prescott, we were going to have an artist basically live score the conversation. Um, and the technology at this point isn't ready for real time music collaboration uh combined with conversation certainly not on this platform uh due to some compression issues and internet latency but i think it'll be uh, to me the the conversation in media companies newspapers tv and music it's there's so much so much opportunity for growth i think that you know we're seeing it on twitch and we're seeing it on the video game platforms and as artists get more creative and it becomes easier for those collaborations to occur, I think the rights issue will, will become worth solving. There's some other attorneys I see out there. If anybody else wants to weigh in in the chat, um, I'm sure Clint's not going to uh, <laughs> take it as formal legal advice. Um, yeah, I think we can even let people, we can, allow people to talk if anyone has has uh, something to add I can maybe raise your hand and I can turn on your talking
All right. Um, any other questions we should be thinking about? Entertain we have DeMille Halliburton is an entertainment insurance broker. Must be an interesting time for that. I imagine, um, hey, Michael Frick, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Um, yeah, I imagine some uh, real challenges with entertainment insurance. If anyone read Mark Geiger's interview this week, um, talking about his views on live music, he definitely cited uh, entertain, uh, insurance as probably the primary barrier to having live music events come back at scale. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of people who are signing waivers that maybe they don't want to sign if they're going to start, right? Yeah. The uh, We just did for Film to Future, a nonprofit that I work with, um, we had five student teams uh, filming short films over the weekend with COVID compliance officer, uh, which required, you know, regular wipe downs, stopping the set, taking breaks, cleaning the environment. Um, you know, and it's certainly a different pace and schedule and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to translate into the live events unless everybody just agrees to sign the waiver, you know, once we get them back. And that's one of the conversations that we'll be having later today. Um, we're going to be traveling to visit with some folks in Florida. Um, John Santoro is a nightclub owner and uh, also owner of, co-owner of Sunset Music Festival. And he actually had his club open for a couple weeks. Um, he was opened and then closed. So he's got a couple of stories he's gonna tell and uh, he'll be joining two entertainment lawyers or Ann Ruda, who's a labor lawyer and uh, Leslie Siegel, who's a entertainment lawyer down there. And it'll be interesting to hear, you know, we're still a ways away from that in California. Absolutely. Um... A couple other questions came in. I'm looking, uh, DeMille just asked, where's that Mark Geiger interview? So I'm looking here, see if I can find it. Clint, you're welcome to hog the mic. Uh, for the moment, um, you said, you know, wondering where folks outside of California are gathering year round and how small towns are doing it. Um, you know, the conversations I've had over the course of putting the summit together, I always just start off with what's going on, you know, are, are the bars open, are the bars closed? Um, and I was speaking with somebody from Huntsville um, about it and he just said the bars are open, the clubs are open, but they're at lower capacities at the moment. Um, and we'll be hearing directly from the mayor there uh, later today. Um, Lorraine, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Josh. No, no, I just posted a link to the uh, article with Mark Geiger uh, for anybody that's interested in that. Lorraine had a question, Simon, do you want to talk about that? Sure, if folks in the music business or entertainment business are choosing to leave the industry and look for jobs, change careers or new businesses or school, um, and a lot of relocation, so that's really one of the major themes um, for today's summit is what are the opportunities outside of New York and LA and San Francisco and talking with some people who are ahead of the curve, uh, maybe in exploring those different places. I think, you know, real estate costs and major cities are super high and it's a lot easier to be creative when you go someplace with less expensive real estate I, you know and we'll hear from when we talk to doc shaw later i mean he bought a ballroom for you know like two hundred thousand dollars and you know toby bought a building in des moines iowa for three hundred thousand and change to, to build a music venue and so i do very much lorraine think that there are a lot of people who are considering relocating um discovering what's possible, you know, the fact that we're all here and people from all over the country are tuned in already. 
you know, it's, it's a lot easier and, you know, I'm not planning on hanging out in LA much over the course of the next, next six months. And I've had more and more conversations with other people who are going, well, all the things that kept me in the big city in the first place don't really apply anymore. Um, and people are prioritizing other parts of their life. Um, for me, that's time in Mammoth and time in the wilderness. Um, and it's, it's been really rewarding. What do you think, Lorraine? I'd love to see your, your thoughts too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, what's, uh, you know, kind of goes back to the reason why we started the summit and are continuing to do it is that, you know, we, we just see these things um, that, you know, they're going to just continue to change and probably change faster than, than we're all used to, right? In terms of, um, I know uh, someone had asked a question about, Peter had asked a question about, you know, getting teams back to work, um, you know, certainly what it means to be in a big city is changing pretty rapidly and uh you know to clint's point what what uh what some of these smaller cities are looking like like you know i think we expect the world and the entertainment business to look very different in a year or two and um you know part of the point of these talks is to kind of stay in step with that as much as we can and and take everybody along with us uh you know who's who's concerned about these things and uh, you know i think that we're where um, everyone's got an opinion, you know, when uh, COVID's going to be over, when, you know, whatever semblance of normal is going to come back. And I think, um, you know, we're all wrong to some extent, but, um, but we have an opportunity to, to kind of keep close watch on these things and, and, um, and most importantly, figure out what they mean to us and what, what can we do in the face of those changes. Josh, I think we should probably wrap up. I've got to get ready cool. for the 9.30. So for those of you who are with us, um, the next talk will be um, the conversation with Toby Parks uh, in Des Moines and Doc Shaw in Tulsa. Uh, hopefully you'll join me for that. And uh, the schedule's up on the website if you need anything else. And we'll be with you throughout the day. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next room.